Now we're going into the last part of the protein synthesis inhibitors, the amino glycosides. Um, they are sourced from strains of Trotomyces and this Micromonospora, and they bind to the 30S subunit of bacteria ribosomes. So where they act, they actually act at the later part, later stage of the um, protein synthesis uh, process. Uh, they actually block the translocation uh, part of protein synthesis. All right, and they are not the these amino glycosides are not bacterial static. They are actually bactericidal agent. All right. Um, if you read other books, you will also find that um, other books that suggest uh, the mechanism of action for these amino glycosides is not only acting on protein synthesis, they also act in the cell wall. Yeah? So please uh, go read um, Patrick, yeah? they will give you a bit more um, information about um, where, which part of the cell wall that amino glycoside will actually act. Now, let's just quickly go through um, the terminology, you know, a glycoside is when you have a sugar and then binds to uh, a glycone, yeah? so it actually form a glycoside, all right. There are many medicinally important monosaccharides, you have glucose, which is very important and quite um, is also widely available uh, or widely used by the by the by the cells. You have deribose, yeah, mannose, and other sugar as well. Yeah, in the case of these amino glycosides, the the way it is actually linked is actually it would have a, a central a glycones, yeah, and the origin of the a glycones come from the silo inocyte, all right. So to form this streptamine which is one of the OH group is changed or modified to an amino group. And uh, this, this uh, streptamine can be further modified to the deoxy streptamine. Deoxy um, tells you that one of OH group, let's see, not this one, this, this OH group is, uh, is, uh, is not there. Yeah? So um, this is the two deoxy streptamine. Whereas uh, if streptamine is further modified to streptidine, it will have um, this arginine moiety uh, at this two, two side. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on. So in amino glycosides, there are um, three um, families of amino glycosides. Yeah. Uh, first one is based on the streptomycin. Um, uh, which is based on the uh, again this streptidine, eh? streptidine uh, template, and two sugars linked to streptidine uh, template. The second family would be neomycin. Eh? This is actually let's have a look. This is actually a uh, two deoxy streptamine, as this is the the egg glycone is two deoxy streptamine. And there's one sugar link at the C uh, C four, and two more sugar link at C five position. Yeah, and the last one uh, is canamycin and dutamycin, and this is the. Let's have a look at which one. Two three. So the last one is canamycin and dutamycin. Yeah, it has. Two sugar, two sugar molecule, yeah, appearing at one end, uh, at C four and C six. For streptomycins, yeah, um, you have the streptidine, a glycone linked to L streptose, and the N methyl glucosamine. Uh, glucosamine. All right. So it's, it's actually the first the, um, the first drug against uh, M tuberculosis, uh, but it has to be used in combination with other drugs. Yeah, and it has the problem is that it actually exhibits octotoxicity, 
with other even similar with other uh, monogamous sex family as well yeah and it also can form rapid resistance towards the the bacteria all right uh, so that's all uh, about tryptamycin. You just need to know that the two sugar, the l strepsils and L, the N-methyl glucosamine linking to the uh, egg glycone uh, moiety, uh, the streptidine moiety that, for, that is, would be for tryptamycin. Yeah? And, and then the second one is the neomycin. Neomycin is the egg glycone is the 2 deoxystreptamine linked to one sugar with neomycin, sorry, deneosamine and, and then uh, the other part uh, of the uh, to the oxytretamine yeah, is linked to D-ribose and L-neosamine B alright so um, this is neomycin B yeah? alright this, you can see that the whole molecule are quite polar so it has a poor GIT absorption, yeah. Uh, and again, these are also linked uh, glycosidically as well. So it's actually unstable under strong acid, right? So these um, neomycin or other amino glycoside family are usually given by injection. In this case, in case of neomycin B, is given as topical application or topical uh, uh, forms. Yeah. Um, there's another. Neomycin derivative called primycetin uh, is actually a neomycin B and C. Okay, and at this part of the neomycin um, B, if you flip it to uh, this is axial, if you flip it to equatorial, uh, and there was the epimer of neomycin B is actually neomycin C. All right. Okay, now let's move on to the third one. Quite quite straightforward, eh? Caramycin or gentamicin, they have a middle a glycone, the 2-deoxystreptamine, uh, all right. Um, so the linkage uh, is the, uh, the 2O molecule at two ends, all right. If you see the rest are actually different, the pattern of substitution, the pattern of substitution are different in this case, yeah, in streptomycin, in neomycin and even in canamycin and gentamicin. All right. So here the substitution is at carbon four and carbon six. All right. So let's let's have a look. The two sugars that actually straddling or uh, this canamycin uh, is three minor three deoxide glucose and six amino six deoxide glucose. This glucose based um, uh, substitution. Yeah. So, um, canamycin is actually made up of three. Um, it's a blend of canamycin A, B, and C. Very potent against gram positive and gram negative bacteria. And they are actually second line drug in TB. Yeah? Um, if you change, we have a look again at the structure. If you change the R group, if R is OH group, it's canamycin B. If R is NH2 groups, is canamycin, uh, sorry, canam the R is OH group is canamycin A. Canamycin B is R equals to NH2. Alright. Now, if this is OH group, yeah, uh, rather than CH, the CH2, NH2 is replaced with, with an OH, that would be canamycin C. All right. Now, uh, canamycin again is polar, is usually given by injection. Because it's polar, it's got, remember again, it's got that lichen um, amphenicols. Yeah, it's got OH group. These OH group are actually susceptible to a lot of these inactivating enzymes like um, you know O phosphorylation O adenylation or N acetylation in in bacteria so that's how they can actually uh, make this molecule become um, less active yeah there's already enzymes in bacteria that uh, make this molecule less active these enzymes uh, will actually um, catalyze biochemical reactions like this O adenylation O phosphorylation and so on all right so, 
to to deliver this as as a, a, a more active molecule to make it more active is um, by improving stability. So one way to do that, yeah, stability against uh, is to actually improve stability of this molecule towards this D or inactivating enzymes. So one way is to actually uh, by you know substituting this particular moiety, yeah, this four amino two hydroxy butyl butyl, uh, butyl mod group uh, at this position at the glycone position of the uh, canamycin. So um, this derivative is called amikacin. Yeah. Uh, so and amikacin is used to treat uh, a very serious gram negative infection uh, in patients that do not respond to um gentamicin. Right? So this is very this is very very good. So the second um, the second derivative that comes out of um, of the modification will be this um, tobramycin, all right? Um, because of the lack of OH group, you can see here, uh, what happens is that in tobramycin, this OH group disappears. There's no, no longer an OH group here at all, all right? The rest remain the same, yeah? No OH group, and here is NH2. Okay, because it is uh, the it has no OH group it is now less susceptible to enzymatic degradation. All right, therefore it is actually more active towards Pseudomonas aeruginosa aeruginosa than gentamicin. Okay, now let's go to gentamicin. All right, it is isolated from Micromonospora purpurea. Like canamycin, canamycin you have canamycin A, B, and C. It's got canamycin C one, C alpha, and C two. Yeah, C alpha, C two. You can see this from here. Uh, R one. There's R one and R two. Yeah. Um, the rest are similar. It has. It's still like canamycin. It has this two deoxystreptamine, but the two ends of the sugar are different. So in canamycin, the sugar are the L garosamine and d purpurosamine okay the changes in the uh, for the gentamicin c1 c alpha 1 uh, c1 alpha and c2 comes at its, these two r1 and r2 groups yeah so yeah r1 and r1 is ch3 and r2 is ch3 that is c1 if r1 r2 is just hydrogen that's C one alpha. If R one is a methyl group, and R two is H, that would be C two. Yeah. So similar to canamycin, it's good against um, gram positive and negative plus Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is one of the uh, strongest uh, strain, one of the. Um, Quite resistant strain again, uh, most antibiotics, yeah, and is usually being co-administered with carbenicillin to delay onset of resistance. Yeah, okay. I think that's a, that's all, right? That's about it. That's as, um, about kind of, uh, about aminoglycosides. So make sure you know um, how do they look like, meaning. Um, What's the difference between um, gentamicin, canamycin, neomycin, and also um, tritomycin? Okay, you don't have to remember the structure. Just need to remember that how the pattern of substitution are different from one another, and also maybe the different sugar uh, that involves in the substitution as well, and what do they do? Yeah. And um, how does the structure affect how do they work and act? So in this case, you can see the whole thing. Uh, they are quite polar. So when they are actually quite polar, what happens is that uh, they are usually given as injection. They 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 cannot. Um, they are easily degraded if you are actually given them orally. That's one thing about uh, aminoglycosides. Uh, 
um, so uh, in for mana kerkasa as well they are um, there are two two ways where they actually act the first way is they actually act as a uh, protein synthesis inhibitor yeah they actually act at the um, translocation phase but at the same time please read a bit more in Greg Patrick um, where they actually block um, they also can um, have an effect on the cell wall especially on the LPS the lipopolysaccharide so please read a bit more on that yeah Okay, um, that's all for the five um, drugs in, uh, in the protein synthesis as, uh, as protein synthesis inhibitors. Yeah, you have, you have seen uh, amphenicols, you have seen macrolides, you have seen nicomycins, you have seen doxycycline, and also you have seen monocalcosides. Out of this, out of this, out of five drugs, yeah, um, the biggest chemistry comes in. Uh, macrolides and also tetracycline. All right. So make sure you know the chemistry of this. Yeah. So as a summary, um, let's just have a look at the summary of the chromphenicols. For chromphenicols or amphenicols, make sure you know the chirocenters. Yeah. The active one is the one R two R uh, chirocenter. Yeah. So make sure you know how you can actually uh, figure out the one R two R. Okay. Um, the deactivating uh, enzymes, what are they involved? Um, what are also involved in the metabolism? Um, what kind of, you know, what are the, will be the major part, major metabolism for this particular um, drug? Yeah. What are the derivative and why? Why, why do you need to modify company calls? Why do you need to change uh, you know, chromophenicols or something else. So there must be a reason. People don't seem, uh, people don't simply change the moiety of uh, of uh, a drug unless you want to improve the stability or you want to improve the activity. So this these two always interplay. These two um, things always interplay in the in the SAR in the in the motivation uh, of changing the moieties in a drug structure. Yeah. Second thing is that uh, in macrolides, the important chemistry is in the ketyl formation and is actually acid catalyzed, right? Um, so you need to know what are the improvements, okay? Um, in lincomycin, usually is the last resort to use for any infection, all right? Um, and the chemistry is, is decomposition under acidic and a clan condition, make sure you know that as well. What kind of SN, is it SN1 or SN2 involved in that decomposition? Tetracycline, okay. They are basically not for three main chemistry involving ring A, uh, ring B, C and D. So ring A has got two chemistry, yeah. Ring B, C and D has got one chemistry, all right. Um, so, the main thing is the enolization is very important. Yeah, the beta di carbonyl ring system of BCD is very important. The uh, tri carbonyl framework is very important. That's ring A. The dimethyl amino um, moiety uh, is very important. Yeah, because the the epimerization. All right, and also again the uh, in addition to uh, epimerization as the being clinically important chemistry, chelation is a second one. So chelation involves the ring C and D. Yeah? Uh, make sure you know how to even sketch that as well, the chelation. All right. And the last one, I think, I just, I just mentioned earlier. So that's all for protein synthesis inhibitor. Um, I'll see you in the class then. Okay, thank you very much.